Hello, welcome back to the Board Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally like to talk a load of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we'll be talking about a winemaking game designed by some geezer from Portugal called Vital Lacerda. We're going to be talking about Vinhos. And in this game, you'll be acquiring estates you'll be producing wine that you'll be flogging to internal or external markets trying to impress wine experts to try and place as high as possible in the impending wine fair so in this video we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules and i mean very very brief because this is an absolute beast we'll be telling you what we do like what we don't like and then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not vinos is still worth playing i think it's 10 years old so it'd be 10 years after it was first released in 2010. So remember, if you are new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in the section down below. We'll see you after this. Board games, 4K. So, Vinos. How'd you play this game? So first things first, like we always say when we're talking about a very, very complex game like this, if you're looking for a rules tutorial, you ain't going to get it here because this game is far beyond our remit to tell you how to play the game. So we're going to leave lots of stuff out of this one. If you want to see how it's played, you can watch us bumble through a playthrough of this one because we've done a live stream a couple of days ago so you can watch us act like we're pissed out of our faces but we ain't going to give you a comprehensive rules overview it's going to be very very brief so that's tough shit at the end of the day isn't it? so Vinos is an action selection game that follows a lot of the traits of the Tower of the other later games like Kanban and the Gallerist. It's like a game that as you select a very simple action and then tributaries sort of break off from that very simple action to make the game more complex, right? So in this game, you've got a central grid in the middle of the board and you'll be moving your pawn around the grid to take various actions that are related to different areas on the board there'll be six years or six rounds in this game you'll get a minimum of two actions per year so you get 12 actions in total but you do have the option of getting other actions from the wine expert favors right so you'll get two actions then you'll do a little bit of maintenance at the end of years three five and six your vineyards will produce wine that will allow you to either sell them at different markets you'll be able to mature the wines or maybe bribe the experts to give you certain bonuses like we said you'll submit wines into the fair these will give you victory points and loads of other things will give you victory points and the player with the most victory points will be the winner of Vino as well so let's talk about some of the actions that you could take in this game so at the beginning of the game everyone's going to select a region from the small Portugal map and they're going to take a vineyard from that region and place their disc in the appropriate region and every player's got a player board that is called their estate you'll place the vineyard in one of the boxes at the top end of your estate each vineyard will automatically produce one wine strength two at the beginning of the game and you'll see that at below the place for vineyards and wineries you will be able to place your wine that will allow it to mature at the end of every round so when you move your pawn you have to be very very mindful about where you're going to be putting it because you're going to have to pay money to move the action pawn in the center of the board if you move in from one space to another adjacent space is free as is moving into the central pass press release space but if you skip a space you have to pay 1000 bagos or we're going to call it money for now because i can never remember how to pronounce it you're going to pay 1000 money to the bank you're going to pay an extra 1000 money if you land in the space where the round pawn is and you'll also have to pay 1000 money to any other player that is occupying the space that you move into so you have to be very mindful about how much cash you're going to blow if you really desperately want to take the action so the first action you can take is the vineyard action what you do you pick one of the regions off from the map you'll take the top vineyard card you'll pay the cost in money you'll flip it over and you'll place this in one of the regions on your estate when you place your vineyard you've got to make sure that you don't mix different types of wine you can't put a white wine in with a red wine they are exclusive and then the last thing you do is you put a renown cube in the region 
that you took the vineyard from. And renowned cubes are used to boost the value of the wine. And that's a very important concept in this game when you're talking about the production value and the wine value. But we'll get into that in a sec, right? Because my brain is already starting to melt. So the next action you could do is the seller's action. You'll pay 2,000 money and you'll take the seller and place it in your estate in a relevant spot. And any wine that you've already got on your player board will transfer directly into the same space on the cellar. And cellars allow your wine to age for longer because if your wine drops out of the slots, it will be discarded, it will be spoiled. So cellar allows your wine to age and gain more value. So the next action you could do is you can take a winery. You'll place this in the top row on your estate, the same place where you're gonna put your vineyards. And these will improve the production value of your wine, right? So next thing you can do is you can hire one of the wine experts from the Rose Gallery down at the bottom of the board. You'll pay 1,000 money. You can hire one or two wine experts and you'll place them in front of you. And these have got dual uses. You can use them for their special ability, which is maybe get money or maybe reshuffle the stack, or you can save them to use them and bribe them when you're gonna enter a wine into the wine fair in rounds three, five, and six, right? So next action you can do is you can hire an enologist. I have no idea what that means because I'm fit as shit, but you're gonna put this on a winery and it's gonna allow you to improve the production of your wine by two points. And I guess these geezers know what they're talking about when it comes to grapes, not those sort of grapes. So next action you could do is you can export wine. You'll select a wine and you'll look at the export grid in the bottom left hand corner of the board and you'll place one of your barrels on one of the spots but you have to make sure right that the wine that you are selling to the export market is of equal value or higher than the number in the little circle right and this is very interesting because it gives you immediate points in red any red shields give you immediate points but if you occupy the majority in the column then you get that many victory points at the end of the game, right? So the next action you could do is the sales action. This is kind of similar to the action we just talked about in the export market. You'll select one of the three cafes that are sitting there. I'm convinced that somebody is smoking dope in one of them cafes. I'm not sure. I haven't been in there myself. But you'll select one of the cafes and then you'll do the same thing. You'll select a wine of equal or more value. You'll plunk a barrel on there and each barrel will give you that much money. And you'll look at your the bank, the vinyos on that side and you'll move your marker up up the bank to reflect the fact that you've just conned somebody and sold them a load of arm brew instead of a load of Merlot. So with the banking action, this is the action that always does my nothing. You can withdraw money from the bank, in which case you will move your market down and you'll take that much money out of the bank. You can deposit cash into the bank, in which case you'll discard the little bagos chits and you'll move your market up on the bank track. And then you can invest, right? And essentially what this is, you'll, you'll pay the cost on the right hand side, you'll move your marker up and this will give you like a dividend or not, as the case may be, at the end of each round. But you can also also divest in which case you can take your money out of your investments and this this will decrease the dividend and you might have to pay some dosh right okay it's complicated i know so the final action you can do is the central action this is the past press release action and this is where the game starts to get beyond my capabilities of explaining properly right so we're going to go into this real real quick and at a fast pace because that way you won't catch what I'm talking about and I won't look silly. So when you take the pass press release action, you can pass, right? Obviously, that means you can't take any more actions, right? But you can issue a press release. And this is a way of telling the wine tasting community, all those wine gimps, that you have produced this amazing wine and you're going to basically rip them off. So what you're going to do, you're going to declare which wine you are going to submit to the fair, right? And then you'll look at the little table on your player board. And this will tell you how many wine experts you can bring along with you to the Con Festival based on the, the quality of the wine. And there's two values to the wine. There's the production value, which we'll talk about in a sec, right? But there's the wine value. And this is the production value plus any modifiers that you get from your seller and any renown cubes that you want to use. And when you use renown cubes, you can pull these cubes off of the board and then you can use them to boost the value of your wine. So what you do, you take your little number chit, place it in one of the spots next to the wine fair, and then that will give you a bonus. You'll move your fair scoring marker up dependent on where the little tiny fiddly little chits are on the wine thing. I'm not talking a load of crap at the moment. And then after that, you can discard a wine and then you can put one of your barrels on one of the wine managers at the top of the board dependent on what they're asking they might be asking for a red wine or a white wine a 
certain quality wine or wines from a certain region and this will give you access to the bonus actions that you can use before or after your turn by discarding a wine yeah some of these actions may be that you can take the export action again or you might be able to lock in your barrel which means you can't take it off and this will give you multipliers that will give you bonus points at the end of the game for maybe having a certain amount of sellers or maybe having a bit of money left over you know what I mean so basically the benefit of this is of taking the press release action is you're sort of preempting the main wine fee you're getting the benefit of it before it's happened but in doing that you're not really going to know what the wine experts are going to be looking for during the fair right so at the end of each round you do a bit of maintenance, which we talked about. You'll pay the interest or receive the interest on your investments. You'll pay any enologist 1,000 bucks here. Then your vineyard will produce. So you'll look at the strength of the vineyard. You'll look at whether you've got any wineries or enologists, and then you'll come to a certain value, and then you'll take a wine, and you'll move all your existing wine up, and you'll place it in the leftmost spot on any seller that you have or any non-seller space that you've got right and that's the wine that you've produced there's also the wine value right so the seller will boost the value of the wine when you're going to flog it you can also use renowned cubes from any region when you're going to flog the wine yeah and the longer the wine stays in the cellar the more valuable it's going to get you know what i mean so you keep doing this when you get to the third year and the fifth year and the sixth year basically you're going to be entering your wine into a wine tasting competition so what you do you any wine experts that you have acquired you will take them into your hand you'll look at the number chip that you put next to the wine fair and that will tell you how many experts you can use in the wine fair and what category of wine experts you can use right so you'll basically select the wine experts you want to use and then everyone will reveal simultaneously which wine gimps they've sent to the fair to con the rich people into thinking that your bucket of piss is going to taste like champagne so then you'll look at the little fiddly chits again and then you'll move your fair marker up depending on what wine experts you have played and then the player in the first position on the wine fair will get the highest amount of points second will get the second amount of points and blah 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 so then you'll keep doing this you'll keep doing this until you get to the end of the sixth round you'll have one last wine fair and at the end of the game if you've got any wine left over in turn order you'll be able to discard the wine to take any bonus actions that you like on the wine managers spaces and once that's done once everyone's passed then the player with the most victory points will be the winner of vinos and i've got a bloody headache so what do we like about vinos so the first thing that we really really like about vinos is that everything in this game makes absolute thematic sense doesn't it you know the fact that you are selecting vineyards and then the process moves to creating wine the wine will generate you money that will allow you to influence the market that will give you victory points you know everything is locked into each other like a very very snug jigsaw puzzle and it really does feel like you are moving forward with momentum that your engine is actually moving at a fast pace it never feels like it's sluggish it never feels like it needs too much oil at any one time and the theme of this game comes across exceptionally well so the second thing that we really like about vinos is the fact that no wine is ever wasted the fact that you might have an abundance of wine in your four cellars that you think you're going to be able to store that away on the sly and you'll be able to have a little pisser in your garage well that's not going to happen because those wine managers are clamoring for your wine you are going to be taking them bonus actions like no tomorrow at the end of the game and we love the fact that not a drop of that tasty wine that you've been saving up is wasted so the next thing that we like about vinos is the fact that the cost mechanism when you're choosing your actions in the center of the board that creates a wonderful sense of tension when you're deciding where you're going to go next not only do you have to worry about where the other players are going but you've also got to worry about leapfrogging over empty spaces and you might end up in the lion's den with my mum and my wife in the same space and you've got to open up your wallet blow away the cobwebs and give them 1000 bagels each which ain't going to happen right so we love the fact that there is tension in that mechanism but it's never really inhibitive to the extent where you aren't going to take a punt on those actions if you really have to so the final thing that we like about vinos is that the press release offers you a really really tasty choice doesn't it are you going to jump in early to give yourself a little bit of a boost up on the wine fair track or do you wait see what categories 
the wine experts is looking for and then pull the trigger but miss out on the benefits of when you're going to grab the wine experts so there's a nice little tussle and a nice little gamble element that emerges from the press release so what don't we like about vinos so the first thing that we don't like about vinos is it's probably a little bit too complicated for its own good in it it's like looking at one of them little smug kids at school and wanting to give it a slap because it's just talking about bollocks you got the very very bitty rules when it comes to the wine fair and what you got to do there and when you look through the rule book for a nice concise step-by-step -step guide through the quagmire that is the wine fair you ain't going to get it from the rule book so it seems to me that mr lacerda was just trying to push the boat out a bit too far and he got stranded out of sea you know what i mean so the next thing we don't like about vinos is the banking system it's a very very muddled affair indeed the investments have made my brain ache you know trying to figure out which side of the investment track you've got to look at and then why you would want to actually increase the investment when you're only going to be getting a couple of quid out of each round nine times out of ten everyone just leaves their investment marker on the initial space and i know in the deluxe version mr lacerda decided to remove the banking portion of the game okay it's on it's on the other side of the board in the deluxe version you've still got a classic version but we would have preferred it had the banking action been maybe streamlined a little bit instead of being removed completely yeah because it does muddle the game and bog the game down quite a bit so to summarize is Vino still worth breaking into freshers, pinching that wine and getting smashed today and in the future? So we are going to say yes, this is a thematically sound winemaking game that offers some excellent yet arduous choices. It's maybe a little bit too complicated for its own good. Like we said before, we know Mr. Lacerda has streamlined this version in the deluxe edition. But all this does is transplant the pain from your head into your wallet because the deluxe edition is a, an astonishing amount of money right which we ain't going to touch with a barge pole so that aside this is a very very intricately woven engine building exercise and i mean exercise you're going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting with this one and we highly recommend vinos we really do like this game we're going to give vinos four out of five if it wasn't so complicated and if they'd kept certain portions of it in the deluxe edition, and if it wasn't that expensive, probably would have got five stars, but it just falls short of that accolade. Often gets compared to Viticulture. We ain't going to talk about that now. That's another video that is going to be made very, very soon. But there you go. That's Vinos. Hopefully you haven't decided to take up drinking after this video. We've given you a good flavour of the game, a good overview of the rules. So hopefully this has been worth it. The migraine that I have now acquired hasn't been in vain but anyway if you're new here please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you next time